from the valleys to the mountain top. Somebody say from the valleys to the mountain top. Now this sounds so much like a motivational uh, topic, but it is not a motivational topic. It's a very scriptural topic. Uh, I believe that we're gonna learn about the mountain. We're gonna learn about the light, and we're gonna learn about the about God's intention for putting us where we are, putting us on the mountain top. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Mika. This is the scripture that, uh, or this is a part of the Bible that most people have probably never opened. Uh, it's a part of the Bible where my people told us that Amen. But I would like to tell you a little bit about Mika. Mika is, is, Mika is not his full name. His full name is Makaya, right? Uh, there is a, it is Makaya, not Mika is Makaya, but uh, it's, 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 it's an abbreviation that is known as Mika. The meaning of that word, it means who is like Jehovah. And he, he lived and he prophesied 750 years after or before Christ. 750 years before Christ, that's when he lived and prophesied. At this time, uh, society was changing from rural to urban. Now, there's something important there, that when the time when he was living, uh, it, the, 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 the society was changing uh, from rural to urban. And the reason why it was changing was because um, as Israelites, they were poor at that time. They were poor. And not that God wanted them to be poor because they disobeyed God. They disobeyed his laws and they became poor. Amen. You know, because some, sometimes some of the things uh, that happen to our lives is because of the disobedience to God. So they were poor. Anyway, uh, now the way those the Syrians were having money at the time. Now Syrians would come and buy the land from the Israelites who were poor and, and develop it and make it happen. Okay? So so now even though it looked like it was a solution to the poor people who were getting people who were buying their land. But it was actually making them more poor because not only would they not have something to eat, but they would have nothing to stay. They would have no land. So this is basically what was happening, right? So, so uh, the people with money would come and give a little money to those who are hungry and possess their land. Amen. So this is the time when Mika uh, came to the picture. When Mika came into the picture, he prophesied, and he prophesied his prophecy is divided into three. His prophecy is divided into three, where he prophesied about judgment. He prophesied about judgment. Number two, he prophesied about the about the the the, the, the remnant or the hope for the remnant. But lastly, he prophesied about the future of of Israel. Okay. So now, where we are reading, it is not where he is prophesying about judgment. Uh, it is not where he's prophesying about the remnant. It is where he's prophesying about the future of Israel. Are you with me? The scriptures kulumanga so as is found in the land of Israel. Kulumanga to bring again zeki as when zeka. Why they are still going through um, hunger and famine? As they are going through hunger and famine, comes a young man who is talking to Israel. He is saying, he is saying, the mountain of the Lord shall be established. Now he is not, you know, people are hungry, people need food. He is not prophesying to say there shall be food coming down from heaven. But he said, the mountain of the Lord shall be established. Because sometimes, you know, even though we know what our problems are, 
But the Bible says we do not know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit knows. In other words, sometimes we do not know what we need, but the Holy Spirit knows what, what we need. So sometimes it is, it is nice to just go to the Holy Spirit and just open up, you know, and not say too many things because sometimes you may think this is what you need. You may think that I need, I, I just need this, I just need this, this boss of mine to be fired and get a new boss. You know what? That's not necessarily a solution. Actually, we get a worse boss. You know, sometimes you just feel like what I need is just extra 5,000 and I'm alright. You know what? You can get an extra 5 million it will be worse. So we, we, we don't know sometimes what we need, but God knows what we need. Hallelujah. So now, God is speaking through me. He is saying a mountain of the Lord shall be established. You know, the, the Bible says, said, said at the time that uh, uh, I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, you, you see now, the poor are hungry. They need a place to stay. They need food. But now, the, this one is saying, I'm anointed to preach the gospel. That means the poor need the gospel and not clothes or food. So, so you see, the Bible has got a way of addressing our needs, not in the way we prefer. Yeah. And, and God has a way to address your needs, not in the way you prefer. Now, the, the confusion comes whereby you, you, you define what solution should look like and the solution comes but it does not look like how you defined it. Then you feel like God did not address your problems. And then I'm here to tell you that God does address all your problems. God does answer all your questions. God does supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. But he does not give you what you think is a solution for what you're going through. He gives you what is an ultimate solution. Hallelujah. So, so he, he is saying, he is saying a mountain of the Lord shall be established. And let me tell you a little bit about little bit about the mountain. There's, there's something uh, important about the mountain. Mountains are in the Bible. And in fact, there are so many mountains that are in the Bible. Let me tell you about four. Or rather, the first four mountains in the Bible. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Now, the first mountain, the first mountain that I wanted to 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 to, to hear about is the mountain uh, Mount Ararat. Say Mount Ararat. Mount. Now, that mountain is found in the Genesis book of Genesis chapter eight. It's a mountain whereby um, the, the, there was a rain, heavy rain, and, and Noah and his people were inside the ark, and it was uh, raining. Now the ark was was moving and moving on top of the waters because the rain rained, rained until everywhere was water, and the ark was floating on the water. Then came the time in Genesis nine, whereby it says the storm is over the storm is over and the rain was over but the water was still high so even though the storm was over and the, the rain was no longer raining but there were still floods that were carrying the ark amen. amen now the storm was over but no one and his people they could not come out of the ark so so they, 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 there's no more storm there's no more danger there is no more havoc but they still cannot come out of the ark yes. hallelujah have you ever been in that situation whereby the storm is over but you are still stuck whereby problems are over but you are still stagnant you cannot move on but we rainbow family churches come and declare to you that the storm is over and indeed the storm is over but you are still in the same place where you were when there was a storm have you ever found yourself being stuck in the level where you used to be when the storm was but there is no more storm but you can't move still but we thank God for this mountain Mount Ararat it is a mountain which is the highest mountain recorded in the Bible that was standing above the, the floods that was standing above the water so the, the ark of, of Noah moved until it found itself on this mountain so when 
alone and be saved. So it was a mountain whereby it was possible for God's people to, to have an accelerated breakthrough because their breakthrough should have come when the water has all gone or subsided. Then only then they would come out of the ark. But they, they did not wait for all of that. They came out. Thank God for that mountain. Hallelujah. So, so this mountain might in our lives might represent something that accelerates our freedom. You know, whereby we're coming out of being set free, even while there's still trouble. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming out, even though there's still trouble. Hallelujah. You know, the storm is over, but I'm still limited. But thank God for the mountain. Now, that was the first mountain in the Bible, but the second mountain is called Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah, hallelujah. Not today, I say, I say, Not today. Mount Moriah is found in Genesis chapter 22. This is the mountain whereby, uh, this is a mountain whereby Abraham was going to sacrifice Umtwana Wake Isaac. And um, so, so without going too deep into that, because that's not my main focus, you know, uh, on that mountain, it was a mountain where Abraham sacrificed the only son or was willing to sacrifice the only son he had and while he was sacrificing the only son he had then God started now to give him his promises so it was a place of exchange it was a place where, where uh, 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 Abraham was giving to God and God was giving to Abraham and then the third mountain I want to mention to you is a, is a mountain, is a Mount Sinai, Exodus 20. You know, when there was chaos and there were people, the, the Israelites were busy, were busy uh, worshipping the, the, the calf of gold and doing all those things. And, Mount, and Moses went to the mountain, and that mountain is this mountain that I'm talking about, Mount Sinai, where God gave him the, the he gave him uh, ten commandments. Hallelujah! He received ten commandments. So he went back to the people with structure and order. Hallelujah! I, I, I hope you're getting something there. The last mountain I'm going to talk about is Mount Nebo. Mount Nebo. Now this mountain is a mountain whereby when Moses was moving, uh, going with Israel to Canaan. God said to him, you will not see Canaan, but I will show you how it looks like. And this is the mountain where he led him to climb on top of. He climbed on top of this mountain and he looked over. He saw Canaan, even though he would never been to Canaan. So that was a mountain he was standing on. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, whenever we're talking of the mountain, we're talking about three things. They represent three things in the Bible. They represent power. They represent authority and they represent visibility. When the Bible talks about the mountain, it talks of authority, it talks of visibility. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says, um, a maker said, a mountain of the Lord shall be established. In other words, I will give I will give authority to my people. I will give power to my people. I will give visibility to my people. Oh, hallelujah. Visibility. Hallelujah. So in other words, God's plan was to restore his people to where they used to be before the fall. Because God's people used to be on the mountain, but they fell to the valley. That is why when you leave God, you say, you have fallen into a wind. Why are in the valley? You do not belong to the valley. You belong to the mountain. But because of poverty or because of need, come some foreign people. Come people who serve other gods. And they take your position of the mountain and give you what you need today and rob you of your position so that they stand in your position when you are in the valley. Today the church is in the valley and God has never meant the church to be in the valley. He meant the church to be on the mountain top but because the church needs it, because
with things we claim to have. This place is meant for people who have a hunger to connect with God. You know what makes what makes a certain angry when he looks at you is your level of connection with God. If there's something that devil doesn't want to see in your life, is your level of connection with God. That's why he will be after you with all he can. Usatana una manja, koto manja wake, and nothing to you, and nothing compared to you when you are connected to God. But when you are disconnected from God, a man that a Satan are too much for you. But when you are connected to God, a man that a Satan are nothing to you. Am I talking in this place? All right. So now, when we come here to, to the church, we seek that deep connection with God, not material things. Now, if you if you want to see how your life is going, look at how you lose appetite in connecting with Him. Your loss of appetite to worship it tells you the level where you are, and now not only the level where you are, how vulnerable are you to the devil? Your lack of appetite of worship. Lebeds what you put Borege must worship. Mena a man king and jet, Octim Bonamundo Borege. Gilen king, I don't know nothing I'm losing. I'm a winning to the devil. Because, because when you get bored, when you worship, it tells us your, it tells us your level of connection with Him. Yeah. When you get bored, when we pray, it gives us an idea of your level of connection with Him. More than who appreciate more than thunders, you must know you are heading for something big. You must know disaster is on the way. When you start to feel like it's cold today, I'd rather stay home than fellowship. When you start to get lazy to read the word of God, it tells you that your connection with God is getting, is getting tiny. Am I talking here? We are here to seek that connection. Oh yes, oh yes. We are not here to receive another car. We are not here to receive another money. But we are here to connect with him. We are here to learn how to know him better. You know, we, we try to speak tongues even when we don't know what to say. We are seeking that connection because that connection makes us who we are. That connection makes us powerful. That connection makes us hot. That connection makes us dangerous. In fact, we win out there because of this connection we have with Him. We win in the corporate world because of this connection we have with Him. We win politically because of this connection we have with Him. Hallelujah. At all costs is a connection with God. Let me let me give you an example. You know you're like a stove. When a stove is connected to electricity, when a stove is connected to electricity, you know it may be cold now, but give it a few more minutes, and you come and touch it again. It's getting warmer. Give it a few more minutes. It's getting hotter and hotter with time. Hallelujah. So when you connect with him, things may not be all right at the same time, but give yourself more time connected. You will not be the same forever. Even if things have not changed this year, it is truly not ready. And you thought that by this time things have been different. Let me tell you, stay connected because even though things have not changed, but something is happening. There's a temperature building up in your life. There's something that is building up. You cannot see it with your eyes, but it is building up. Tell your neighbor something is building up in your life. Don't give up yet. Stay connected. 
and giving each other for a hand in marriage and receiving love order from the others, you know, inside the stove, until the stove is connected for long enough. And then once the stove gets connected for long enough, then you will see cockroaches one by one. You will see ants one by one. You will see rats one by one. Manifestation visible. Um, now, now, this, this is what the scripture means. It does not necessarily say light makes manifestation. It makes manifestation visible. In other words, even if there is no light, there can be manifestation, but it's not visible. So, somebody might say there is no manifestation because it is not visible. So light makes manifestation that was there to be visible so that you are able to see what is happening. Because if it is dark, you may say nothing is happening while there is everything happening. It's just that it's not visible. Amen? Alright, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, Look at your neighbor, what do you want to do? I want to go ahead. You know, you need to go ahead. So, you go by the ass, but he sees on the board and so. Amen. I know one of my sons are looking at the holy yard. Who go ahead because he has put him 
cannot see English. <laughs> but when I came on stage to talk, they must listen. You see, you see now, in terms of the work when I work, I am on the mountain.
Christ. Now, from today onwards, in this season, in this winter, in this time, I'm refusing to be in the valley. I'm moving to the mountain top. I will not stay where I used to be. I'm moving to the mountain top. The behaviors of the valley remain here right now. I'm going to the mountain top where, where I speak. Everybody will listen. Where I speak, every demon will hear. Where I speak, there will be power. Where I speak, there will be a change. Where I speak, things will move. The reason why things don't move now is because you're in the valley. But I'm here to drag you out to the mountain top. Give God a hand of praise. I am moving higher in the name of Jesus. I'm no longer going to be the same preacher. I'm moving to the mountain top. I'm no longer going to be the same musician. I'm moving to the mountain top. I'm no longer going to be the same wife. I'm moving to the mountain top. In the name of Jesus, I'm no longer going to be the same employee. I'm moving to the mountain top. In the name of Jesus, come on somebody. Shake that situation. Shake that level. Visit. 